Hey, it's Joe, and I just interviewed the product manager for Gage at ThoughtWorks, which is an acceptance testing automation-based testing framework, which is open source. So today, I thought it'd be fun just to take a quick look at how easy it is to actually get started. I've never used Gage before, so join me as we learn together, getting it installed and taking a quick look of all the different components that make up Gage for acceptance testing. Check it out. So the first thing before you install Gage, you do need NPM. So I just want to check to make sure I have NPM installed on my machine. So I'm just going to type NPM V for version. And if you get back a version, that means you have NPM installed. So far, so good. If you don't have NPM installed or you don't have the latest version, you can easily install it as well. So just type in the following command. So let's just see if it actually updated our version. All right, so notice before we had 6.4, now we have 6.4.1. And just so you know, the same command works in Windows as well. I tried it on my work machine. So either way, I'm using a Mac. If you're using a window, it should be the same exact steps. So now that we have NPM installed and we're using the latest version, let's install a gauge. Just type in the following command. Now to create the gauge project, I'm just going to type in the gauge and knit command. So using gauge and knit Java, it created a Java project for me for gauge. I'll set up with all the directories and all the files. And just so you know, I prefer Java, but also you can install C sharp, Java, JavaScript, Python, or Ruby. So if we look at the contents of our gauge test folder that we created. Notice it already created a directory structure for us with all the different files for our project. The main file we want to look at is this example.spec. Let's open it up and take a look. All right, so for this particular example spec, they basically are counting how many vowels are in multiple words, and they have an example table with the different words and the vowel count that they want to verify. So let's actually run this spec and see what happens. Now to run the spec, you just need to type in gauge, run, and specs. Awesome, and it passed. Now let's just take a quick look at how we can modify that spec file to actually start up a browser and do a simple search on my website. All right, so I want to use IntelliJ for my Java Selenium gauge test automation project. If you go into plugins, under their IDE plugins, it list all the IDEs that are supported. There's IntelliJ right here, and it just shows you how to install. So what you need to do is just go to your plugins section of your preferences within IntelliJ. Just type in gauge. All right, nothing is found, but it says search in repositories. Click on that, and then it brings up the gauge option. Just click on install. I'm just going to restart IntelliJ with the Gauge plugin. All right, so now that we restarted, I'm just going to create a new project. And because we installed Gauge, there's now an option for a Gauge project. So let's just select Gauge. I'm just going to call it Gauge Selenium Demo. Okay, cool. So it created a Gauge project demo for me with all the required directories and file structures and also includes that example spec we looked at earlier. All right, so before we create our Selenium test, let's just look at the example spec really quick. Every bullet you see in the spec is a step within our test scenario. So if you're familiar with BDD, uh, this would be like a given one then, but this is markdown language. So it's for any business language your team agrees on to use. Uh, that's how you write up your markup language. So think of a spec more of like a business layer on top of your test scripts to make it more readable and more understandable. So in this way, your test requirements can be captured in a way that allows everyone on your team, including non-technical folks that don't know Java or understand the programming, to understand what the test is doing. So it's very similar to, as I mentioned, to a BDD feature file. But unlike BDD, where the main premise of BDD is the communication part to hash out, make sure you're, you're developing the right thing before you write code, Gage was designed specifically for acceptance testing. 
And so your markdown language describes the test and what your test is going to do in a very readable way. And if you clicked on any of these statements, this will take you to the Java code that's running behind the scenes to actually implement the step in your scenario. Okay, cool. So next, let's go add Selenium to our project. Now, if you had Maven, you can also use Maven. I'm not going to use Maven. I just want to do this quick and dirty. So I'm just going to download the dependencies. And then once the dependencies are downloaded, just go to File, Project Structure, go to Dependencies under Modules, and then click on the plus sign to add. Select JAWS or Directories to add. And then navigate to where you downloaded your Selenium dependencies. All right, cool. So we do have our Java Selenium dependencies now associated with our project. Cool. All right, so now I'm just going to write a new spec. So I'm going to right click on my specs folder, go to new and select specification. All right, so I'm just going to create a really simple step first that just navigates to my website. All right, so now we need to define the code to actually create the step. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a step implementation for this navigation. I just imported the Chrome driver and just create a very simple navigate to code. And then once you have that implemented, all you need to do then is right click on the spec itself and then select run. All right, cool. It passed. There's also a report that's generated. If you go into reports, there's an index.html. If you open that in your browser, it gives you a pretty nice view of what happened. Zero failed, you got one pass. If you click on the pass, it'll show you what passed, how long the step took, and what the actual step was that it ran. Pretty cool. So I'm a big believer in just jumping right in, getting your hands dirty, and just seeing how things work. This should be enough info to get you up and running and checking out all the other features that have to do with Gage. So stay tuned for even more Gage videos as well as other automation awesomeness on my YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe down below.